seven times and then they shouted i think uh, those people must have been pentecostals pentecostals shouted lord and maybe you'll shout tonight i said you'll shout tonight yeah. ah that that kind of amen will not bring jericho walls down yeah. amen ah you're waking up as pentecostals now then they went they shouted and the jericho walls came down flat how glad i am brothers and sisters tonight no jericho walls around me nothing can stop me i'm moving on to that place and because the jericho walls are down i'm going to take the land are you with me you will take the land and then they wait they conquered one city after they conquered the city that is this jericho there was one man Achan. i hate to have an Achan in my team that is not is not looking at the land is looking at the little piece of garment or gold here is not looking at where we're going and then he stole that and then he went to hide that and then god said i'm not with you anymore but joshua did not know and so they were defeated and then joshua came and said what is all this we're going to that place to conquer and see what has happened to us and god said there is sin in the camp but thank god for joshua i said thank for god for joshua he dealt with that thing number four confession confession as you come here tonight if there's anything the devil is trying to use to whip you on the head and to knock you on the head and to say where are you going they're talking about success and you you of all people you are shouting amen hallelujah you say yes we're going there we're going to take them and then you remember if there's an acorn inside your bag there's an acorn inside your stomach there's an acorn inside your head inside your brain then you say aha uh -huh, wait wait for me a minute and then you say it can come out of my bag it can come out of my stomach and then it can will come out and then you confess that thing, cleanse it up, and then Achan is gone. Then you are back again. We're on our road again. We're going to up, we're going to have that success. I said we're going to have it. But you know, there are many people that just go on like that. There is something that is bringing guilt, condemnation in their hearts. They never deal with it. They just they just move on. And then after they have gone on, and Achan, they carry Achan about in their bag, Achan about in their mind, in their brain. And then they say, I don't understand why God is not giving me the victory. I can tell you it's because of that Achan inside there. Confess and forsake and be cleansed with the blood of Jesus and victory will be shown in Jesus' name. And then number five is confidence. Now, once Achan had been dealt with, and Achan was gone, you find Joshua, he went back to the battlefield. He became so confident in God. He said, Lord, I need an extended day to be able to overcome the enemy. He said, sun, stand there. Moon, stand there. Let me finish before you ever move. That's confidence in God. Confidence. That's number five. Write that down. Confidence. This is how these people got to where they got to. And this is how we too, by the grace of God, are moving on. And I'm going to get there. And we're going to get there together in Jesus' name. Then, number six, I must read this one to you. It's in Joshua chapter 11. Joshua chapter 11. I'm reading from verse 15. I call this commitment. Commitment. You want to write that down, number six? Commitment. In Joshua chapter 11, verse 15. Here it says, as the Lord commanded Moses, his servant, so did Moses command Joshua, and so did Joshua. He let nothing undone of all that the Lord commanded Moses. How I love a man like that. He left nothing undone. He was not a person picking and choosing. I like this doctrine of the Bible. I don't like this doctrine of the Bible. I accept this i don't accept this this one is for the time of moses and this one is for the modern time of joshua not joshua everything the lord had commanded he said i am for that what it, he knows god doesn't change he says i am god i change not and because god remains the same 
Moses may be dead, but the word of God given unto Moses to be given unto us that is still alive until that time. Therefore, he was committed to the word of God. If we are going to have the success that the Bible people had, that commitment must be there. And I see committed people here tonight. Are you one of them? What are they? Committed people. God bless you. God plant that seed of success in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Number seven, continuation till the end. Continuation till the end. And that's Joshua. At the end of the whole scene in Joshua chapter 24, he said, now, you people, I'm almost ready to quit. I'm almost ready to go. If it seems evil for you to serve the Lord, I want to announce to you, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord continuation till the very end. Now, oh, these were the steps that these people took. That is how they had the success. If you will commit yourself tonight to the word of God, and you commit yourself tonight to obedience to the word of God, you are going to have that same success. Number one, what's the, pe the first person we talked about? Again. Number two person. Joshua. Now number three. Jabez. We're looking at First Chronicles chapter 4. First Chronicles chapter 4. And I'm reading to you there from verses 9 and 10. First Chronicles chapter 4 verses 9 and 10. Number one, the path of progress. Number two, the principle of perseverance. Not Joshua. The principle of perse perseverance. Now number three. Jabez, the power of prayer. Jabez, the power of prayer. Tonight we are going to pray. And the Lord is going to answer our prayer. And nothing can stop this mighty army of the Lord. We are going to have the success in Jesus' name. Now, Jabez, the power of prayer. We are looking at First Chronicles chapter 4 verse 9. Chapter 4 verse 9. And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. And his mother called his name Jabez. Saying, because I bear him with, with what? With sorrow. Look at the background of Jabez. I bear him with sorrow. And Jabez called on the God of Israel. Saying, oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed. And enlarge my coast, and that thine hand might be with me, and that thou wouldest keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. And God granted him that which he requested. Now, very quickly, uh, what do we see here? Number one for Jabez, parental problems. Parental problems. Maybe as we look back at your life. You see, I know why I'm not making it. I know why I'm not succeeding. Look at daddy. Look at mommy. Look at our background. Look at the problems they had. And look at what they passed on to me. Whether it's a curse. Or maybe it's a kind of enmity in the family. Or something. Whatever it was. Jabez had a share. And here it says. His name even reflected. The kind of background that he had because he was born with sorrow. Number one, what's number one? Parental problems. Number two now, personal prayer. Personal prayer. Personal prayer. Now, this is very significant. Can you think about it? A person like Jabez. If Jabez had waited, I need somebody to pray for me. Well, I'm going to pray for you. I'm just making illustration. I need somebody to pray for me. If I could find somebody to pray for me, and then I read the whole of First Chronicles chapter 4, I read from verse 1, and the people who are there, they don't look like prayer warriors, they don't look like, like prophets, they don't look like preachers, they don't look like, like pastors. What if you're in a place where there's nobody to pray for you? What do you do? Like Jabez, you take the bull by the horn and then you have the name of Jesus and you have the power of the Holy Ghost and you have the promise in the scriptures and you go on your knees and say there's no pastor here, there's no prophet here, there's no prayer warrior here, but like Jabez, I'm going to have personal prayer and we're told in verse 10 and Jabez called on the God of Israel. 
I want to encourage uh, members of Deeper Life in particular. You know, uh, this uh, kind of pray for me syndrome, pray for me, pray for me. It's good to pray for you. But, you know, somebody said, if I give you a piece of fish, you finish eating it, you come back again. If I taught you how to fish, you'll be able to get the fish yourself, get to the riverside and get the fish, and that is far better. That means then, if I teach you how to pray, how to get your own answer, how to touch the very throne of God, how to claim the promises of God, how to manifest the faith that cannot be denied, that's much, much better than, you know, every time, pray for me, pray for me, because, number two, personal prayer. Jabez prayed. What kind of prayer did he pray? Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed. I call that, number three, positive prayer. Positive prayer. You know, when some people have problems, let me die. What am I living for? Oh, Lord, this is too much for me. It's even better to die than to live. All that is negative. That's why some of those children of Israel, that's why they couldn't get to the land of Canaan. Any little problem, there was no water to drink. Why did we leave the land of Egypt? There's no water to drink. Even this manna that we're eating, we're fed up with this manna. It's even better to die in the wilderness than to go over there. Negative praying. Many of them bleached their bones in the wilderness. But in the case of Jabez, positive prayer. And you'll never find negative prayer in my mouth anymore. How about you? I said how about you? When you are tired, don't express tiredness, discouragement in your prayer. Be positive. Live in the light. Walk in the light. And look at the promises of God and say, because he lives, I will live. And because he cannot be defeated, I'm not going to drown in this river of problem. I'm coming out and I'm going to get to the other side and I will overcome in Jesus' name. If you will be positive like that, things will turn around. I said things will turn around. And every challenge you have, every problem you have, every mountain you have, everything will turn around in Jesus' name. And then you said, let's go now and enlarge my coast. Enlarge my coast. That's number four, personal progress. That's what he was praying for, personal progress. He wanted to move on, move on, and move on. Enlarge my coast. And when you are praying, be very definite. You know, there are people that just pray in generalities. Oh Lord, this and this and this and that. They're too general. But in the case of, in the case of Jabez, everything was very definite. And every Everything was very much particular. Enlarge my coast. And then he goes on. Now I'm looking at number five. And then it says that thine hand might be with me. With me. When it says with me, it's asking for peculiar partnership. Peculiar partnership. Not just for your hand to be upon me, but to be with me. You want to be in partnership with the Lord. That every step of the way, and you know there is no enemy that can conquer the Almighty God. Anyone? No. And there is no challenge that will kind of intimidate the Almighty God. If the Almighty God has his peculiar partnership with you, and is with you all the time, in the day, in the night, when the enemies are there, when the foes are there, when the friends are there, when the, any, whoever, whoever person, whatever person is there, when the Lord is with you, you are going to succeed. I said you will succeed. That peculiar partnership. In fact, sometimes you know, when you come close to God, some people might be so unhappy with you that hey, you're getting close to God. They say, do this. You say, I'm sorry. The divine partner will not allow me to do that. And then they say, let's go this way. I'm sorry. I cannot go where Christ will not go because he's with me. I'm with him all the time. You might even lose some friends. But if you lose uh, one or two friends and then the almighty God is your partner, is your friend, is your father, is everything to you. Is that all right? I said, is that all right? Would you, would you prefer to keep a human friend who is, uh, is not is just a riffraff, is not, is not an important, significant person? Would you prefer to keep that person and lose your fellowship with the Almighty God? 
no way. I don't want to do that. I'm going to keep with the almighty God and thank God. You know, I'm with God. You are with God and we are together. This is good fellowship. Peculiar fellowship and partnership with the Lord. And now it says, it goes on in that same verse. And it says, and that thou wouldest keep me from evil. Keep me from evil. Permanent protection permanent protection he wanted the protection of the lord oh lord you are with me and because you are with me i want your hand to be with me and i want you to keep me from evil that it may not grieve me purposeful preservation the reason i want you to preserve my life is because i want to get something done before i leave this place i want to achieve something before i leave this place when i come to the end of my journey when i come to the end of the day when i come to the last day on earth and then i look back i want to know that i've lived a life of purpose here on earth always think about that the final day which is the goal the final day when you eventually come to the final end and then you look back you say thank god my life was a life of purpose a life of purpose. I've achieved something that I'm not regretting for. And then I've led the world a better place than I met the world. Purposeful living. You want to have that goal in your mind. When we're talking about success, success is not just a personal thing. I want to be happy. It's good to be happy. I want to be healthy. It's good to be healthy. I want to be rich. It's good to be rich. But what are you going to do to the world around you? Touch some somebody help somebody lift somebody up live a purposeful life that you will know the lord has protected my life preserved my life for a purpose i've touched somebody's life in this life and then when i'm gone then my name will still be on their list they'll say he helped me he touched me he lifted me up he encouraged me he loved me he blessed me that's what you want for your life and then we're told now in that latter part of verse of verse 10 and god granted him 